Right. So that's the discussion about community-acquired pneumonia, which is the commonest form of pneumonia and the one that most people be dealing with most of the time. There are, as I've mentioned earlier, other types of pneumonia, the hospital-acquired, ventilator-acquired, and there's the immunosuppressed pneumonia. And the reason why we define these as separate to community-acquired pneumonia is that the infecting organisms are going to be different. The chance of having a standard, normal community-acquired organism is much lower in hospital-acquired disease. So, for example, hospital-acquired pneumonia, the common organisms causing disease in those circumstances would be Staphylococcus aureus and the gram-negative bacteria Klebsiella, E. coli, Serratia, and Pseudomonas aeruginosa. And these organisms are harder to treat and do not respond to the standard amoxicillin and macrolide therapy that you use for community-acquired pneumonia. So they require very specific treatments. Immunosuppressed patients, because of that effects of having a very weak immune system, suddenly the patient is actually exposed to infection with a whole range of microorganisms that don't normally affect people. And that doesn't just include bacteria. The bacteria will be the same as you might get in a hospital acquired disease, but in addition there are a range of viruses, cytomegaloviruses, which may cause infection in these circumstances uh, and cause severe disease. And in addition, the respiratory viruses that in most people are self-limiting and very mild disease, parainfluenza, adenovirus, etc., rhinovirus, cause much more se severe disease in the immunosuppressed patient. And in addition, there's a range of organisms, fungi, which you may get infected with if you're immunosuppressed, which would never normally infect somebody who's got a normal immune system. And that's mainly Aspergillus and Pneumocystis durevecii. So, hospital-acquired pneumonia is important because actually it is the commonest fatal hospital-acquired infection. So you need to know about this as a disease that requires close attention and aggressive treatment when it develops. The treatment needs to cover the organisms that we discussed, Staphylococcus aureus, the grand negatives, and Pseudomonas. And therefore, patients will normally be receiving comoxiclav, ciprofloxacin, third-generation cephalosporin such as keftazidine. They need a more, com a more extensive antibiotic regimen that you would normally use for community-acquired pneumonia. The actual presentation of hospital-acquired pneumonia is pretty much the same as community-acquired pneumonia. Cough, fever, shortness of breath, and with new consolidation and raising, a rise in the markers of inflammation. Pneumonia in the immunocompromised host is very much more complex than normal pneumonia because of this extended range of organisms that may be causing the problems. And again, just to reiterate, we're talking about patients who have really quite marked immunosuppression. They have to have an organ or a bone marrow transplantation. They've been receiving chemotherapy or high-dose cytotoxic agents or biological agents to immunosuppress them because of a major inflammatory disease such as uh, connective tissue disease. Or they are HIV, HIV infection with a low CD4 count. Or they have a hematological, hematological malignancy which by their very nature affect the white cells and therefore make you uh, much more immunosuppressed than you would be normally. And the situation here is that there's such a large range of organisms that the decision about treatment options is much more complex than it would be in a normal person presenting with community acquired pneumonia. Because you may need to treat respiratory viruses, you may need to treat cytomegalovirus, you need to treat for the organisms that may cause hospital acquired pneumonia, and then there are the fungi, Aspergillus and Pneumocystis, and unfortunately Aspergillus and Pneumocystis require very different treatments. So it's a very complex situation that requires clinical assessment to make sure the right medication is given to the patient. And often these patients will end up on antibacterials, antivirals and antifungal agents because we're not quite sure what's going on. This is a CT scan showing you what an invasive fungal infection looks like after a stem cell transplant with focal disease at the top of the left lung. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions customized to US MLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.